Alright, I'm going to do a video on my solar panel installation. Uh, before I installed, I did a lot of planning. One reason I'm doing a solar installation is our electric bill, or electricity, is quite expensive here in California. And the first 339 kilowatt hours you use in a month are pretty cheap at 13 cents. But once you start using more than that, it starts quickly uh, increasing in price. So basically I want to install a solar panel installation it basically operates in this high tier and that way I'm only uh, using or trying to use only electricity and the, the cheaper electricity and use my solar panel to use it. With various calculators, Go Solar California's got a good one. You put in the number of panels, the inverters, tilt, uh, direction, how far off the roof they are. Basically gives you a chart like this. Then I made sure that basically all of this is going to be producing in that high tier rate so that I can get a good payback. I've got south facing which is what you want a roof that's at 20 degrees which is the perfect angle for my uh, location here in the silicon valley but after the sun's been up for about an hour then i'm in full sun all day with no shading real shading in the evening which is perfect for this location and i can fit about six panels up there another reason why i'm only putting six panels although i can add on to another location next thing you want to do is get familiar with codes so i read this one it was from october 2012 it's like 30 40 pages this is a key diagram that shows you um, how to ground basically you're going to need to engage uh, unspliced conductor but again double check with your inspector he might require six or four for various reasons in the past you had to do this for lightning protection and even uh, it was required regardless it, this is now optional again this could change in the future so you'll have to check with your uh, read up on your latest codes California Solar Printing Guidebook, I found this to be invaluable. Really a lot of tables and information on codes and how to um, write your plans. A good table, for example, is conduits on the roof. This is something that I'd, I'd forgotten about. Um, basically, you gotta look at the temperature in your area and how far your conduit is off your roof to determine what gauge wire you need. For example, if you're in a high temp area, you can't even put the conduit on your roof. You gotta get it at least a half inch off the roof. So no laying conduit directly on the roof if you're in a high temp area. Okay, I recommend Snap and Rack because they make the rails and the mounts all at one company. So it's one installation manual. This tells you and you'll need to read it so that you can put your planes together and know how far apart your roof mounts need to be based on your wind speeds in your area and your roof angle, etc. After all that, you gotta create your plans. I did these in a couple of uh, days, or maybe one day actually. Site plan, I used Google, satellite, sketched this um, in Word, then deleted the image, put where my panels were gonna be, and my main panel. Just quickly through here, here's the, uh, put an aerial view showing the panels, um, lines where my rafters are, and panels where the roof mounts are gonna be. Mine are gonna be six foot apart maximum. Um, where am I gonna run my conduit? You just kind of want to sketch what your rafters and where, you're, where they're going to be, maybe just for a typical install so they can kind of see what the flashing is going to be and what your typical rafter size is. Wiring diagram, I cut and pasted this from the inverter website and then added in some extra information, but I didn't draw that. I just cut and paste. A lot of this is all cut and paste. Cut and paste from the roof mount installation manual, cut and paste from the solar panel and the inverter installation or uh, spec sheets, cut and paste from the uh, installation manual with some of the you know what they're made of and stuff all from the spec sheets um, on the website and then the last thing you want to do is put your labels in um, there's websites out there that sell these and also tell you where you, where they need to be located submit your plans my city turned them around in a day the cost can vary my city was three hundred dollars so i think it would be much cheaper in some other areas then you got to go buy all your hardware these are my rails for 10 footers to do a six panel install this is the uh, conduit that's going to go on the roof. I've got a 10-foot piece of EMT for that. Some PVC that's going to go down the side to my main panel. And I've got all my conduit fittings, uh, strain reliefs uh, to get the conduit into your box water tight. This is the box that's going to go on my roof. This is the one that's going to transition me from metal to plastic. You'll need an AC disconnect and the breakers, um, a new two-pole breaker, and I had, I'm gonna have, I had to actually get a split breaker to get a little bit extra room to fit that in. Um, I got stucco, concrete, I need concrete to get all my uh, conduit on. Going with 10 gauge, the bolts to install your inverters, all the hardware for the panel installation. All this is pretty much from Snap and Rack. And then all the roof mounts, I bought these uh, lag bolts, um, bus cable, which is from your inverter company. I use this end phase, six of those, I got six panels in the garage, haven't pulled those out. And then here's my flashing that I'll be installing today. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm on my last roof mount. Got 10 of them to go, my last one here. Just wanted to quickly show you the tools I'm using. Hammer to find the rafters. 
uh, half inch socket, uh, put in the lag screw, the uh, drill for the pilot uh, hole, uh, use a crowbar with the flashing to sort of get the uh, asphalt shingles up, and then the uh, sealant. You can watch the uh, installation video for the manufacturer. This is Snap and Rack, and uh, they got a much better, great you know video showing how to install this. So I'm not going to bother, but just about done here. All right, got the rails on. That was pretty straightforward. Uh, just bolted each each uh, footing. Uh, the, the rails are actually 10 foot 2 inches long, so I got an extra 4 inches on the end here, which worked out perfectly. It allowed me some space to attach my junction box. This is where the AC bus cable will come in right here, ground will come in here, and uh, this is the EMT conduit going down to the box on the side of the house into the main panel. Got the strappings on 3 feet from each box, and on for inspection. That's about all I can do for now. All right, got my rough solar inspection completed this week, and now on to the next phase, which is to install the six microinverters on the roof. I'll show you why this is called snap and rake as well. Basically, we got a bolt, a couple of washers, and this basically, I guess, snaps in place. I think that's why they call it that. And bring the inverter up and install the screw, the bolt, rather. All right, let me give you a quick tour of the wiring on the roof. Got the eight gauge running along each of the inverters as well as bonded to each rail. So two there crosses over, two for each rail over there. Then continues on through each of the inverters bonded to the junction box. Uh, basically comes in here, bonded here. The ground from the AC bus cable is grounded to this other screw. This is spliced onto some 10 gauge for the 240 volt and 12 gauge for this uh, neutral communication wire. This heads down to the junction box on the side of the house. All right, conduit continues on down to the side of the house. The sole purpose for this box is to switch to PVC to make the rest of the run easier. Here you can see I'm bonded the eight gauge unspliced to bond the metal conduit before switching to PVC. All right, there's that junction box switching to PVC, which comes down to the AC disconnect next to my main panel. Basically, this is non-fusible and this condition is off. You flip this and press it in and it makes the connection. Here you can see the 8 gauge continues on, unspliced, bonded to this box, and continues on to the main panel. At this point, I highly recommend hiring an electrician to make this final connection. If you've done all your work correct at this point, it shouldn't take him or her long to review it and then make the final connection. He'll need to install a new two-pole breaker in the panel if you don't already have one. All right, I'm ready to install panels. Okay, here you can see the eight gauge unsliced bonded to each of the panels. And you can also see a stainless steel tie wrap I used for cable management to keep the cables off the roof. Got the six panels up. You can see the mid clamp bolts here. And at the end, they have the special end bolts that are slightly different. And Snap and Rick has some great installation videos on YouTube for that. Uh, but basically I've got the Six panels up, need a little bit of dusting. Got the cables off the roof with the stainless steel tie wraps. Waiting for some warning labels on, for the conduit and boxes and I'll be good for final inspections. Okay, I received approval from the power company to go ahead and turn the system on a few days. Had some shading a couple days ago in the evening. Yesterday, nice clear day. Today, some high clouds and achieved 6.92 kilowatt hours today. Past three days, 23.1. If you take this out to a month, it'd be about 250 kilowatt hours, which is a bit more than the 165 that the calculator is anticipating. However, we've had three pretty good days, and obviously there'll be some rain and clouds, etc. This is an average output. Here's the bill of materials to see the final cost. This includes everything from the panels, the AC bus cable, all the metal electrical boxes and fittings, the plastic fittings and conduit, bolts and screws, the AC disconnect, the breakers from the main panel, all the wire from the 8 gauge ground, the 12 gauge communications wire, the 10 gauge, all the roof hardware to get everything mounted, the rails and flashing, roof sealant, the city permits, the warning labels, it comes out to $4,000. After rebates, $25.90 assuming I get the 2,000 kilowatt hours per year at 32 cents. This is the high tier three, tier four California rates. I'll be making $663 or saving that each year. So the payback is four years.